Almost a decade ago, the Great War came to its conclusion. Many people were slain when the capital was besieged. Many who shouldn't have. Non-combatants. I didn't care much for them, if I'm honest. To me, they're nothing but thralls, but even so, I can't help but feel bad for the bastards. They thought they were being saved from the grasp of a tyrant. Instead, they were roasted alive by their... savior. She got what was coming to her in the end, though, and in her stead, they crowned a new king. A spineless king, though. I'm even more disgusted by our ruler, who bent the knee to this new hegemony. The northerners were granted independence with no questions asked, but us Iron Men were made to submit, abandon the old way, and instead become civilized. No more reaving, no more raiding, no more taking what is rightfully ours. We would now have to sow our own fields, toil in the mines like common thralls, and forfeit the sacred traditions that allowed our people to prosper for thousands of years. Some of us adapted. They became merchants, using our legendary ships to create new opportunities for themselves and grow filthy rich, even more than they could have by plying the trade we've been known for since the beginning of our history. But the rest of us commoners? We could no longer go on raids and live like kings. We were now forced to become fishers, laborers, woodcutters, deckhands. Slave work, whose only reward is a pitiful wage that keeps us bound in servitude to the wealthy. That keeps us complacent. Or so it was until our trade ship was boarded by pirates. Not a lot of us lost our lives in that attack, but we did lose all our precious cargo. Those of us who survived were let go, as the pirates mocked us. We hope to see you again soon. Bring more next time, they said. That's when our captain pledged that we will return to the old way, and we will be predators again, not prey. Tails between our legs, we sailed back home and our captain took all the money he still had into commissioning the largest ship I've ever seen, which would be capable of taking us west, to a rumored new land filled with opportunities that would allow us to go back to doing what we do best. I was just a lad when I went on my last raid. That was the last time I was truly free. I yearned to feel that once more. But our journey west was not going to be easy. Very few people dared to sail that way. Even fewer returned. But the tales we've heard of a war-torn land full of squabbling clans that never seemed to gain the upper hand over each other, they sounded like a raider's wildest dream. Because while the armies clash, their settlements remain undefended, ripe for plunder and conquest. Emboldened by a memory of our past and a vision of our prosperous future, we braved the open seas in search of glory and riches. For weeks we've sailed across the endless ocean without any sign of land. All the ravens we've sent away would always come back. Little did we know, our ship would never reach the shores of this new land, for a violent storm broke out and it turned our plans upside down. Our mighty vessel fought valiantly against the relentless waves, but in the end, the ocean won, and our galley was torn apart and swallowed by the sea. Only thing I could do is hold on to the broken mast and breathe in whenever the tumultuous waves would raise me to the surface, if only for a brief moment. The ritual drowning of our homeland prepared us well for harsh situations just like this. I do not know for how long I held onto that mast. Could have been hours, could have been a day, maybe even more. You tend to lose track of time when you're holding onto a piece of driftwood as the ocean chews you up and spits you out. What matters is that by the time the storm came to an end, the waves carried me to a golden shore. Could this be our destination? That was my last thought before passing out. When I woke, I noticed a few members of our crew around me. They must have had the same idea, holding onto small pieces of the wreckage as they were carried by the waves into that very same bay. It didn't take long for us to come together and start counting the survivors. Out of the 200 Reavers who embarked on this campaign, only 20 of us remained. Still, with 20 good men we can pillage the whole damn world, but in that moment, we had more immediate concerns, such as starvation because the supplies we came with are on the bottom of the sea. All we had left were the wet clothes on our backs and our steel. An ironborn's weapon must never leave his side, and to that end, our scabbards are tightly fastened. Once our situation was clear, we gathered our wits and started formulating a plan. The first order of business was to find a vantage point that would help us get our bearings. So we headed to the nearest hill, and from there we could see for miles. Nothing but empty desert all around us, but in the distance, there was something that resembled the walls of a city. 
heading over there was going to be our best bet. Navigating this desert would have been difficult, if not for the river which leads directly to our destination, so we followed it, not only for the fresh water it would provide, but also because wild animals would come to drink, allowing us the opportunity to hunt. But no such animals live in this wasteland, not that we've seen, so with empty stomachs, we trekked along the river bank for three days until we reached civilization. An orchard of some kind, with strange trees and even stranger fruits. We could think of nothing other than filling our stomachs, and because we were starved and exhausted, we'd rather have avoided a fight, so we asked the villagers for a donation. They refused, stating they don't have enough to share. We understood, from the look of them, there clearly wasn't enough food for both parties, so one had to be sacrificed if the other was to survive. We volunteered the locals. Once we put their fighters to the sword, we took their supplies and we would have enthralled the survivors, but our watchman shouted that a large army was making its approach, so we had to grab what we could and take to our heels. It would seem that these squabbling lords aren't as negligent of their lands as we were led to believe. They wasted no time in riding to their village's defense, but our small raiding party got out of there in the nick of time and they never caught us. That was our first taste of the land called Calradia, and it was as sweet as the fruits we've stolen, despite the hardships we faced getting here. Since then, we kept raiding small settlements, taking whatever we wanted and capturing a few people to help us out with our daily tasks, such as carrying our loot, washing the blood of our clothes, or cleaning the horses we stole from the second village we've attacked. It was good to return to the old way. But that did not last for long. As we moved north, we pillaged the countryside and our deeds eventually attracted more attention than we were expecting. And when we arrived to what was going to be our final village raid, a local lordling was waiting for us. We walked right into the ambush he prepared with no chance of walking out. We held the line for as long as we could, felling many enemies who came at us, but for every one we killed, three more would close in, and in a matter of minutes, we were overwhelmed. I was among the first who have fallen after I felt the cold caress of a steel mace on my face. By the time I came to my senses, I got dragged away and thrown into a dungeon, where the ambush mastermind began his interrogation. He asked questions such as, what kind of sea raiders attack from the south, or where is your hideout? I held my tongue because if he realized that there is no hideout, and that my entire crew got slaughtered in the ambush, he would have cut my throat. Clearly we left an impression on these people during our short stay here, otherwise they wouldn't have been so desperate to root us out. He tried beating the information out of me, but an ironborn doesn't break easily. Fortunately for me, the Lord got word of another village raid, and because he had more pressing matters to attend to, he stormed off, saying he'll be back, with better tools to extract information. I needed to make my escape. But that is easier said than done, so I bid my time waiting for the right opportunity, and after two days have passed, I was beginning to wonder where this Lord was. I got my answer when the guards were talking about how the enemy managed to capture this lord. A stroke of luck which bought me enough time to come up with a plan. Not long after, another noble from this clan must have passed through the town, taking the best troops with him because the elite guards that used to look after me were no more. In their stead, some peasant militia was assigned to guard duty, and they would provide me with an opportunity to escape. So I called one of these weaklings to me and gave him a piece of my mind. I first said a few words about his mother to wind him up, and finished by insulting his bravery and telling him that he's nothing but arrow fodder for his lord. He didn't take kindly to my words, so he unlocked my door to give me a beating. I'll admit, he did give me some trouble, but I did manage to wrestle his knife away and sliced his throat with it. With this, I would fight my way out. So I snuck as much as I could, and where stealth failed, violence succeeded as I used the Seax to dispose of all who stood in my path. It's good I fought these guards one by one, I couldn't have handled more than that, because when I killed the last of the bastards, his thick skull broke my blade. After this ordeal, all that was left to do was walk out of prison and sneak through town until I reached the main gate. This would have been difficult if not for the cover of darkness which shrouded my escape. And that's how I got to where I am right now, naked, unarmed, destitute and starved, all alone in an unforgiving world that I declared war upon. 
trying to relive the glory days of the Ironborn, while all those I came with are either dead or completely lost. Will I make it out of this, or will I perish just like the others? Whatever the case, the Drowned God will not receive me if I give up without a fight. Let today mark the beginning of the saga of Balon Blacktide. The very first thing I needed to do was remembering just what I was capable of. Confusion and temporary memory loss are just some of the symptoms of blunt force trauma. First of all, trade. I spent the last three years of my life on a merchant ship. Plenty of time to pick up quite a few tricks to get more money out of the things I'm selling. Then I reminisced about my days of being a reaver and how I would often find more valuables hidden away by the people we were raiding stashed in dark corners that most of us would overlook. After that, I focused on athletics. My physical condition isn't what it used to be a decade ago, when I was regularly pillaging the coastline with my crew and I'll need to get back in shape. Next, I tried to remember a few tricks for fighting with one-handed weapons. I personally prefer battle axes, they work quite well against civilians, but if you try to use them against a real army, well... Let's just say that arrows don't care about how strong and intimidating you are. I'd rather hide behind a shield and be alive than gloriously be shot to death when a real battle begins. Once these essentials were taken care of, I came to the conclusion that I must be cunning if I am to survive and with all that done, it was finally time to assess my situation. My biggest problem is being disliked by every major faction that inhabits this continent and not only that, but I haven't made any connections with the criminal underworld either, so I will be a target for everyone, regardless of the side of the law they're on. If I am to carve out anything for myself and make my journey here worth it, I have all these foes to contend with and it doesn't matter what you're trying to achieve in the world for that, you need the help of other people. In my case, soldiers to fight by my side, but nobody is willing to risk their life for free and if I want to hire a crew, I'm going to need money, which I can take from those weaker than myself. Unfortunately, I am in no condition to fight anyone until my health improves and that won't happen until I find some food. So if I am to get anything done, I'll need to solve all of my current problems, starting with the last one I mentioned and working my way up the list. When it comes to filling my stomach, I have several options. The first one is to travel to a village that's being raided by a large party, wait for a defending lord to interrupt the raiders just like it was done to me and my crew, and when the two sides clash with each other, sneak into the village and threaten the peasants into giving me some of their supplies. That was my initial plan, and because there's already a war raging between the horse lords of the east and the kingdom that ambushed my crew, the best course of action was to skim the border between these two factions and keep an eye out for any rising smoke. That's how you can figure out if a raid has started. So I headed eastward and sure enough, there was already smoke on the horizon. But it was thick black smoke, the type that's usually left by smoldering fires, which signifies that those villages are not worth visiting, because they've already been looted and burned days ago. As I kept going east, I noticed white smoke beginning to rise over the mountain. A raid has just commenced. So I walked through the forest and when I got close enough to see what was happening, I saw that another raid began to the northwest. Now I was torn between waiting for an opportunity here or checking on the other village. I chose the second option, but as soon as I walked out of the forest, some roaming gangs of looters made me reconsider, so I ran back to relative safety in the forest, having settled on the first choice. The nomads were still in the process of raiding this village when some pink banners closed in, but they did not have enough manpower to challenge the raiders, so all they could do was wait for reinforcements. Which eventually came, but instead of going to help the village, they instead chose to pursue me. And even though I know how to navigate a forest better than anyone, being starved for all this time didn't allow me to run at full speed, which eventually allowed my pursuers to catch up. I thought I'm a dead man, but instead, the lord leading this retinue introduced herself. Germana of House Vatatzes, a great family in the Empire. So that's what this faction is called. The Empire. 
should be easier on the tongue than the kingdom that ambushed my crew. Germana must have found me irresistible if she chose to chase me instead of helping her compatriots against the invaders. But she was playing hard to get, throwing threats around such as surrender or die. I couldn't put up a fight even if I wanted to, so her men just grabbed me and took me prisoner. I no longer had any self-autonomy, I'd just be dragged along Germana's party as she traveled from village to village to recruit more people for her war party. If there is a silver lining to being a prisoner once more is that my jailers gave me whatever food scraps were left after their feasts, and I was feeling my strength slowly returning to me. I wish I had stayed with my captivating captor until I made a full recovery, but when I noticed we're walking towards another city I uh, panicked a little, because if I'm thrown into the dungeon, my health condition will stagnate. Luckily, the one who was assigned to watch over me drank a bit too much last night and fell asleep, and that's when I made my escape. But that just gave me the illusion of freedom, because without people to keep me fed, my health condition started deteriorating once more, and I tried walking through a couple of villages, looking for opportunities to feed myself, but no such opportunity presented itself, until I was detained by another imperial lord. He kept me captive for only one day and even gave me a tour of his castle. I thought the tour will end in the dungeon, but to my surprise and relief, it didn't. But after a while, Fadon didn't want to bother with me anymore, so I was let go. And even though I recovered a bit of my strength, my stomach was still rumbling and since I have almost no chance of reaching a village that I can extort for some food, I decided to play the role of a thrall until I'm strong enough to break free. So when the first gang of looters caught me, I tried making a deal. Take me with you, feed me, put a weapon in my hands and I'll kill anyone who stands in your way. But they are simple-minded fools, gold is all they wanted. And since I didn't have any, they just captured me, hoping to get a bountiful ransom. In the meantime, they were going to make me do the same things I've made others do. Wash clothes, carry loot, make traps for small animals, and I would have done it all in exchange for something to eat, but I escaped from them just a day later. I had to, because I overheard my captors contemplating whether 15 of them can take 4 sea raiders. They could, but the bandits of the land have an uneasy truce where they stay out of each other's way. An honor among thieves type of deal, where they don't attack each other because they're already hunted on sight by the nobility. But I don't play by their rules, and I knew that with a bit of luck, I could take four sea raiders all by myself, so I slipped away from the looters unnoticed. But I couldn't fight those seamen just yet, because two other gangs were nearby, and they would have jumped in to help their comrades. In fact, all three groups were prepared to attack me, and I knew I couldn't defeat them all, so I ran to the nearest village and took refuge there. The militia would not fight to protect me, but the bandits didn't know that, so they ran away and left me in peace. But that turned out not to be the greatest idea, because moments after the bandits took to their heels, an imperial lord showed up and uh, how do I put this? Bandits are afraid of imperial militias. Lords have no reason to be afraid because they own the damn place. I knew that if I waited in this village I'd be caught, so I ran as fast as I could, just as the outlaws did, and I was praying that they would make a bold move, turn back and grab me to take me with them, but that didn't happen and eventually, I got snatched by the Imperials once again. In theory, I had enough strength to put up a fight. In practice, there's no way I can defeat 78 people all by myself, especially when I don't have any weapons or a horse. So I surrendered. For a couple of days, the Imperial party gave chase to a small gang of 11 sea raiders, and after the bandits were decimated, the survivors got captured, taken to town and ransomed. I was worthless to the ransom broker, so I was just thrown into the dungeon. That was pretty much a worst case scenario for me, because that's a complete waste of time. I can't go anywhere, I can't do anything, and my health doesn't regenerate. That and the lord who slaughtered my crew could learn of my presence here and fulfill his promise. At the very least, I can say that I'm moving up in the world. Quite literally, because the dungeon I'm in right now is to the north of the first dungeon I was held in. Only three days later, when the guards were changing shifts, I managed to sneak out of there. 
But after I walked north for a few hours, I was intercepted by yet another Imperial party and taken back to the dungeon. I'd much rather have been a thrall for a gang of bandits. At least they keep me fed. Four days later, I managed to slip out of jail and this time, I decided to just let myself get captured by the first band of outlaws that I happen upon. They're better company than the Imperials, if you ignore the smell. Initially, I spotted a party of 16 looters in the distance and I tried going after them, but I wasn't fast enough and quickly lost sight of them. But that was for the better because soon after, I ran into the gang of four sea raiders that I was planning to attack a week ago. I'm not strong enough to do it right now though, so I would be their prisoner for a few days until their food scraps bring me more strength. But their hospitality only lasted for a single day and they quickly threw me out. I could only recover a third of my health, but this would have to do. I would either defeat them and take the first step out of abject poverty, or I would be back to square one. Or dead in a ditch, although I have a feeling the drowned god had other plans for me. Anyway, less talking, more raiding. I've been a prisoner for over a month and I'm getting tired of this. I need to pay the iron price for some basic gear, so I ran after these raiders and shouted at them that I will kill them, and then I got ready to execute my master plan. If these sea raiders live up to their name, they'll use shields and thrown weapons, just like my ironborn reavers. Indeed, they did, so my plan was to dodge their missiles, pick them up and throw them back. A return to sender kind of deal. The relentless barrage of harpoons was both a blessing and a curse because on one hand, any one of these javelins could take me out, but on the other hand, there was plenty of ammo to throw at my enemies once they would run out of projectiles. So I picked up one and then two and then eleven of these javelins and that should have sufficed. But I got greedy and when I went to take the twelfth one from the ground, the enemy anticipated my move and landed his javelin straight on my lower back. I should not be alive after that hit, but as our saying goes, what is dead may never die, but rises again, harder and stronger. Those words are to be my guiding light and shall keep me going until the end of my days. Of course, I was back to square one, but at the very least, I'm far away from any Imperial prisons and now I could bide my time, let myself be captured by bandits until I make a full recovery, and then make some plays to get food, clothes, a weapon and a horse. Once I gear up, I will have gained a foothold in this new land, a solid foundation upon which to build the life that was promised. For now, all I could do was run around with these bandits as their slave. All this running around actually helped me regain some of my athleticism and I found out I can now move slightly faster than before. Maybe this'll give me a tiny advantage in upcoming fights. I also remembered a rogue trick that allows me to organize my crew to more efficiently raid settlements. But I won't be making use of this trick anytime soon. Anyway, for three days these sea raiders dragged me around, which was enough to regain a small portion of my health. I could have waited until I was back at 100%, but I was getting impatient. It's been a long time since I got out of prison and all I've done was be captured, get thrown into another dungeon, twice, and then captured some more. This isn't at all what I envisioned when I set sail for this continent. For the second time, I told these raiders to prepare to die, but I needed to be careful not to repeat the same mistake I've made before. Last time I attacked them I got greedy and tried grabbing more javelins than I needed. This time about 8 would have to suffice. When the fighting began, I decided to climb the nearest hill, go a safe distance away and wait for them to start chucking spears at me. I then collected 9 javelins and kept running and dodging their missiles and I didn't try to do anything else until I was sure they ran out of ammo. When they did, I kept running away, then turned back and threw a spear at one of them, but uh, the raider reacted quickly and blocked it with his shield and with one quick slice of his sword, he managed to cut my shoulder. The pain instantly sent me into shock and I was once again at square one. After another day of being dragged through the snow, I came to the conclusion that if I put up a fight before regaining my full strength, I would just lose and waste a lot more time. 
My plan of stealing javelins and returning them to sender was the best I had, but I needed to be ready to endure a couple of hits as well. So once I escaped the grasp of the sea raiders, I spotted a couple of looter gangs. So I just went to them and they took me under their wing, hoping to sell me somewhere. Nobody would buy me, but they didn't know that. Once they let me go, I was free to go get myself captured by another gang of looters and then another, and while getting dragged around, I spotted a party of only two sea raiders. So I escaped for what feels like the hundredth time and approached those guys. But other gangs were around them and I couldn't fight all of them, so you already know how this encounter ends. With me being captured once again by a group of three looters. Once they let me go, I thought that maybe I can defeat these three losers, provided at least one of them has a bag of rocks. And because I was at 50% strength, I decided the time for action is now. But if I wanted to fight them right then and there, I would need to contend with another party of six, and I knew I can't beat nine people, so I traveled through the forest for a bit, and once the triumvirate got separated from the other gang, they took notice and assaulted me once more. This time, I would not be their thrall. My plan for this fight would be to run away from the enemy, and as they throw rocks, they would land in front of me, provided they missed. It's quite simple, really. If you want to throw a rock at someone hard enough to do some damage, it's only logical that the rock's velocity would have to be greater than that of your target, and if it misses, it lands in front of him. I would need about 10 rocks to deal with a single looter, and there were three of them, so the plan was to pick up 10 stones, and then employ a hit-and-run tactic, returning to pick up the stones I threw so that I may reuse them. Three minutes into the fight, I only managed to pick up a total of 8 stones. For some reason, the rock thrower switched to his melee weapon. He probably realized what was going to happen if he gave me all of his projectiles. But downing even one of my enemies with 8 stones would be exceedingly difficult, because if I were to hit someone other than my target or, god forbid, miss my shots, then I would not be able to win this fight. Now, these looters are not all the same. I mean, they might look the same to a lord born with a silver spoon in his mouth, but when you're fighting for survival you got to notice subtle details, such as the fact that one of them has a pitchfork, another is armed with a hammer, and the third one wields a machete. Ideally, I'd be able to knock Machete Boy unconscious, steal his weapon and slice his friends to little bits. But separating them to get a clear shot on that guy was a painful and time-consuming endeavor. Because every time I were to land a hit on my target, he would flinch in pain, which briefly slowed him down and allowed one of his bodies to overtake him. In the end, I decided I'll just throw stones at whoever is willing to receive them. And I will try to circle back and pick some of them back up, to use them for a second or third or fourth time. The problem is, every time I stopped to pick up a rock from the ground, that took a couple of seconds, precious time in which the enemy would rapidly close the gap and hit me. By the time I downed my first enemy, the one with the hammer, I was already in critical condition, barely holding on. Unfortunately, I was almost out of rocks so I needed to circle back to my victim and pick up the stone that knocked him out, as well as his weapon. Maybe going melee would have been my best option, in spite of the massive risk it entailed. When I stopped to pick up the hammer, the fork was millimeters away from piercing my flesh, but I evaded the strike as if through a miracle. But it was all for nothing. The risk of going melee outweighed the benefits, so I tried to pick up one more stone to throw at my foes and maybe even the odds. But just as I stopped to pick it up, the machete cut my shoulder in the same spot I got sliced by a sword a few days ago, and it was lights out for me. Another failed attempt. Another return to rock bottom. It could have been worse, I could have been dead. But the looters I tried to kill were kind enough to pick me up and patch my wounds and then took me prisoner. If I could reverse the weaves of fate, I would have done so after my first failure, days ago, when I tried to beat the sea raiders with their own javelins, but I am an Iron Man. I can't just glimpse into the future and figure out the right path. We don't have the gift of foresight. Instead, we've been made to be tough bastards who rise up every time they're knocked down almost with a stubborn persistence. You know how the rest of this goes. 
I got captured, then discarded, then it was time to look for another group of bandits to take me with them so I can eat their scraps. But that wasn't going to happen anytime soon because Simir, a lord of the Sturgeons, caught up with me. Of course, I surrendered and for a time, his party was nice to me. Their scraps tasted a lot better than those of the bandits. Simir showed me a lot of the world, especially the eastern part, but when he got me into a city, well, let's just say that my underpants are already brown, so nothing noticeable happened. But my fears did not come true. He didn't throw me in the dungeon, because lords prefer to do that in their own cities, and this was a town owned by the horse nomads. When I made my escape, I wanted to search for bandits to leech off of, but before I met any, I got captured by another imperial lord who dragged me along with him for a few more days. By the time I snuck away, a lot of my strength returned, but I was still without any food, so if I were to make some plays, I would have to do them now, before I starve and wither away. Or just let myself be captured by bandits once more so I can eat their leftovers. When I met a party of seven looters, I chose the second option. It was the safest course of action. During my short stay with these thieves, I got even healthier and they were kind enough to take me back into Sturgeon territory, where I spotted those small raider parties a few weeks ago. I hoped they'd still be around because I felt strong enough to take them on. It didn't take long to run into the group of four that I attempted to murder one month prior. They were really happy to see me, they were hoping that I'd scraped together some money in my time since I last saw them. That and them thinking I'm a joke for trying to kill them without a weapon. Twice. But this time I was not in a joking mood. This would be a fight to the death. Either they would perish or the drowned god would finally take me. He knows I didn't just give up without a fight. The plan was the same as in all my failed attempts so far. Dodge javelins, collect javelins, dodge some more and when the enemy runs out of ammunition, return the favor. Once I gathered 10 of their fishing harpoons, it was time to let them get close enough so I can land a hit. It would seem that since my last encounter with these fellas, one of them lost his shield, so he was obviously going to be my first target. Target hit. One dead, three to go. The second was a bit more difficult to deal with, because even with all his gear, he was still able to outrun me. But when he began winding up his strike, his movement speed decreased enough to give me some breathing room to turn around and prick him with his own javelin. If his reflexes were faster, he would have raised his shield, but he was on the offensive and thought that this will end the same way it did a month ago. He underestimated me, and when he died, one of his two remaining bodies realized that the situation isn't in fact a joke, as he initially believed, so he fled the scene leaving me and the last raider in a 1v1. This could have ended the same way it did a month ago, but I wasn't going to let that happen. However, my last enemy wasn't as easy to deal with as the first two, because I missed my first shot, and my second hit his shield. Not only that, but I also got stabbed pretty badly, it was a miracle I was still alive after that. He also managed to block my next shot, and he was quickly gaining on me, so the only thing I could do was run, wait for him to wind up an attack, and quickly try to land a hit on him. That didn't work. He blocked every single shot, and somehow his shield still didn't break. But with six javelins stuck in his shield, it would seem that his speed has slightly decreased. Whatever the case, he got greedy and thought nothing of protecting himself. He considered that his armor offers enough protection against my limp-wristed javelin throw and once I'm unarmed, he can just slice me up, so he didn't bother blocking anymore. Big mistake. One javelin to his shoulder was enough to put him out of commission forever and make me the victor of this battle. With my enemy's corpses scattered on this battlefield, there was plenty of loot for the taking. Their armor, javelins, shields and swords, maybe even their food. Look at this, I'm already holding a falchion and a shield filled with javelins. I hope I'll get to keep all of it. But when I began looting, I don't know exactly what happened. 
I did not get everything I was supposed to. I only got a shield, a tunic, two pairs of shoes and a bunch of food. I couldn't carry all of it, but I took it anyway because I knew my load will get a lot lighter once I consumed all the fish. But for some reason, I didn't get any weapons. I can't explain why. Maybe they got buried in the snow and I was too afraid that other bandits might show up, so I didn't waste time digging them out. But let's not focus on the negatives. These raiders had 75 gold coins on them, which I was planning to put to good use as soon as I'm done around here. But the best thing that this victory brought was the food. The olives can be sold into the nearest village so I can get a bit more money, and the fish will keep me fed for at least a couple of weeks and I no longer have to let myself be taken prisoner just to eat a few scraps. I'll still probably get captured a few times until I reach my next destination, but I no longer have to depend on the mercy of outlaws. Which is rather strange when you think about it. Back home, if any of our enemies dared to survive the battle, we'd just slice his throat and be done with it. But in this strange new land, even the scum of society have a peculiar sense of honor, which actually got three of them killed. They would still be breathing if they didn't show me any mercy. Now, my idea to visit a village and sell my olives was a good one, because just as the fight was over and the battlefield looted, Four groups of raiders gathered around and were planning to avenge their fallen brothers. But I got to the village of Glavstrom just in time, sold some of my loot for 46 gold coins, and loitered around there for a while, waiting for the bandits to scatter. And of course, they eventually did, which bought me some time to head south, towards some uh, interesting villages I learned about during my first stay in prison, where I was planning to purchase something that would give me a lot more freedom. But a group of five looters was blocking my path, so the only thing I could do was crawl back to the village and take refuge there, while waiting for them to pass. When they got out of sight, I marched south. And just as I passed near an imperial castle on my way to my destination, a lord burst out through the gates trying to catch and imprison me. Luckily, I was just about to enter a thick forest, which I know how to navigate better than these folks. I never told this to my crew, but before I worked as a deckhand on that trade ship, I spent a few years working as a logger for one of the northern houses. That slave work is proving itself to be valuable right now, because if I didn't know how to efficiently travel through wooded areas, I'd be thrown into a dungeon and have all my stuff taken away. I don't ever want to go back there. But this realization puts things into perspective. My people, including myself, we're so obsessed with returning to the old way that we were blinded to the benefits of other professions. And now that I am here, perhaps I shouldn't let myself be bound to tradition. Why pay the iron price for everything when paying the gold price can serve me just as well, if not better? Why rely on killing everyone when diplomacy and betrayal can help me achieve even more? The old way is still going to be the central tenet of my philosophy, but now that I am in a new place with nobody to tell me what to do, I can run things just the way I want to. But I'm wasting time talking again when I should be raiding, so with the Imperial Lord on my tail, I ran through the forest towards my destination, the horse ranch of Vealos. How do I know about this? Well, it's bound to the city of Mizea, where I was held for a week. And the prison guards talk among themselves all the time about all sorts of things. I picked up this info by simply paying attention to their chatter. Anyway, when I reached the hamlet, I asked the villagers to show me what they're selling. They know I'm an enemy of their empire, but as long as I have the money, they don't ask too many questions, because cash up front is a beneficial arrangement for both parties involved. But all they had in stock were some horses that exceeded my price range, and some mules which aren't very quick or maneuverable. So I held on to my money and walked to the next stable in the village of Orthra. Here they had a few workhorses for sale at a nice and reasonable price, and I had enough money to buy one of them, so of course, I did. This mount isn't great for combat, but it does allow me to travel much faster than if I were walking. And that brought me some much-needed sense of autonomy which I haven't felt in a long time. No longer will I be at the mercy of bandits or imperial lords, because I can just run from all of them as well as chase down anyone who's trying to run from me. From now, I can pick and choose my fights and with a bit of food in my stomach, I felt a sense of independence for the first time since the day my crew got slaughtered by those imperial bastards.
The speed I achieved by riding this horse was also quite nice, and now, every time I spotted an enemy, I could simply pause for a moment, to think of the best course of action, and then just run around them and towards my destination. But I still didn't have a weapon and without something to fight my enemies with, I had no way of asserting myself in this world. So all I could do was look for opportunities to get one. Now that I can pick my fights, I can engage whoever I feel like I have a chance of defeating. Such as this lone looter, provided he has some rocks he'd be willing to share with me. To verify that, I simply rode past him with my horse to see if he would throw anything at me. If he didn't, I'd simply have used my speed to run away and leave him in the dust. But he did prove that he had stones, so you already know the plan. Run, collect projectiles, return to sender. The fight would be even easier now that I had the shield, so I dismounted, dodged most of his shots, blocked some others, collected 10 stones and then threw one of them right at the looter's skull. If I land all of my shots, victory is guaranteed and then I can take this guy's weapon. When he got close, he tried to hit me, but I blocked with the shield, bashed him away and threw another rock at him. This would be a piece of cake, or so I thought, because the next time he struck me, he somehow pulled off a trick which moved my shield out of his way and managed to land a hit and I went back to a familiar experience. That of being knocked unconscious and dragged away as a prisoner. Fate can be a cruel mistress. Luckily for me, because I was dressed like a sea raider, the looter thought that I am one and didn't take anything from me. I've already mentioned the truce of outlaws that most bandits of the land seem to respect. Calradians are a strange bunch. As soon as I was well enough to walk, the looter dropped me off and thought that my attack was a mistake. He even apologized for defending himself. But I wasn't going to let him walk away, he was my best bet of obtaining a weapon. So I rested in a nearby village for a while, and when I recovered a bit of health, I went back to chase him down. I wouldn't fight him until I'm well enough to do so, so for now all I could do was stalk him, while also trying to stay out of the way of larger packs of outlaws. When I felt ready, I attacked the looter once more and this time my plan was the same. Gather rocks, block, bash, throw, repeat. With a shield I could even turn to face him and block his projectiles, so that I wouldn't get hurt in case he didn't miss his shots. Once I had about 10 rocks, I threw a couple of them at his head and when he closed in, I blocked his strikes, bashed him away and threw another stone at him. If I could do this about 7 more times the fight would be won, but I didn't always have enough time to pull a stone from the bag, aim and then throw it back because this bastard was pretty quick on his feet. If I needed to take two hits and bash him twice before I could throw one rock, I would. I wanted to play it safe because I've been a floor rag for these bandits for far too long and I'm not going back. I also made an effort to center my block to his strikes in an attempt to avoid repeating the same mistake I've made earlier, but he had an axe which dealt a lot of damage to my shield so I needed to take him out before my bulwark broke. Eventually my patience and effort paid off and the looter's lights went out for a while. This victory rewarded me with 29 gold coins, one looter prisoner and uh, a shirt. Still no weapon. Oh well, at the very least I can recruit this looter and uh, if he falls in battle, I can then pick up his weapon from the ground and use it myself. Now my plan was to head back north and look for that one sea raider that ran away from me. Even without a weapon, I could beat him with his own javelins. On my way there, I passed by a large imperial army and realized that things are starting to be nice for me. But I still needed to obtain a weapon, it feels like I'm at least a week away from achieving that goal. When I got back north, I noticed a party of 7 raiders which I've done my best to avoid. If each of them has 4 javelins, that's 28 projectiles that I would have to dodge and I don't think I can do that. Luckily my speed allows me to just say no to those impossible situations and simply walk away. So I kept going and eventually ran into an old friend, the cowardly sea raider. In a way I have to be thankful for his cowardice, because if he stood his ground, I doubt I could have emerged victorious. Before I engaged him in a fight, I told my looter prisoner that I needed his help 
It took a bit of convincing, but once I made the argument that if I can beat him with his own stones, together we'd be unstoppable, he agreed to join, help me kill the raider, and then split the loot evenly. When the fight began, I ordered the looter to charge, while the raider desperately tried to fend him off with javelins. The first one he missed and I picked it up. The second one hit the looter, but it wasn't a lethal hit. And the third hit my shield. He couldn't throw the fourth one because my goon closed in and gave him a few good smacks. His own javelin finished the job when I threw it at his chest. But when it was time to share the spoils, my new companion called dibs on the weapon and the shield. He wouldn't use them, since he had no idea how to do it. But the man took a javelin to the chest, least I could do is keep my promise to him. I only got a tunic and 31 gold coins. Maybe next time I'll get a weapon. Next on my hit list were the three looters who humiliated me when I tried to fight them with their own rocks. It's the same three assholes. The one with a pitchfork, the one with the hammer, and the one with a machete. But this time I had a friend and a noble steed. So I would have an easier time fighting them, but even so, I needed to be meticulous in my approach because otherwise, they would humiliate me again. Now, since I had no weapon, I would need to collect whatever rocks these guys throw at me. However, this time, my mount would buy me some breathing room to do so. When I see a rock I'd like to pick up, I can lead the looters away from it, and then circle back to pick it up. Then I'd simply mount up and repeat the process until I have enough minerals to take one of these guys down. Preferably the one with the fork, which I could then pick up and use as an improvised spear with which to stab the other two. So that's exactly what I've done. Collecting the rocks was a lengthy, boring and arduous process, but my looter friend bought me enough time to do so when the enemies turned their attention on him. He survived with just a concussion and once I had enough projectiles, it was time to return the favor. Now that I have a mount, it's much easier for me to separate my enemies so that I may have a clear shot on my target. Eventually the fork fellow got put to sleep, probably from the boredom induced by the monotony of this fight, so I led his friends away and then returned to pick up his polearm. But I still had some stones left so I could pepper these looters from a safe distance before closing in for the kill. It took some maneuvering, but when the time was right, I stabbed one of these guys in the skull, dealing a nice amount of damage and sending him to whatever afterlife he believed in. Now there was only me and the machete wielder. I ran around him for a bit, trying to stab him from horseback, but I missed more times than I would like to admit and I was starting to see that I'm very prone to making mistakes. A horse may grant you speed, but mobility and handling are impaired. And the horse can sometimes just not respond to your commands in time, leaving you open to retaliation. The safest course of action was to dismount and fight this guy on foot. I had a shield I could depend on if my fork wasn't enough. Fortunately for me, it was. And the last one of these looters now lies dead. Surely I'll get a weapon this time after I single-handedly killed three enemies, right? Wrong. I don't know how or why, but I did not. Again. This was starting to get annoying, but I suppose I should be grateful for what I did get from this fight. Another potential friend, 75 gold, some ragged armor that I could equip, and another tunic I could sell. Maybe next time I'll also get a weapon, you know, no rush, no pressure. But now I was faced with another problem. Food was about to run out. There's three mouths to feed and all I had was a little bit of smelly fish. I needed to get more, so I traveled to the nearest village, where they didn't have anything. And then I went towards another village that would sell more fish. I suppose it's better than nothing. Once our food situation was resolved, I decided to scour the forests for any small groups of bandits that I could fight and eventually I spotted two gangs of four sea raiders each. When the area was clear and I was able to engage one of these groups without any interference, I invited my second looter prisoner to join us and now we were three against four. I still had no weapon, but you already know I can use the javelins that are being thrown at me and if my looters get killed, I can then borrow their weapons. When this fight started, my plan was to hold my shield high and distract my enemy, 
to hopefully take some of their attention away from my looters, but that did not work. My fighters were the prime target for these raiders. Fortunately, they missed most of their shots and all of their javelins were closely packed together, which made it easy for me to fill up on ammo while my foes were distracted by my looters. Regrettably, one of my boys got killed, but his sacrifice bought me enough time to pick up six javelins. From here on, I was 1v4, but with the right tricks, I could easily dispatch these guys as long as they didn't have anything to throw at me. That wasn't the case, one of them still had some projectiles and as soon as he ran out, he would pick them back up. So I had to be very careful not to get hit. Eventually he stopped doing that and resorted to using melee weapons, but I was not sure whether 6 javelins were enough to kill 4 enemies. What if they don't die in one hit? What if they block? I needed to keep luring them away and return to pick up more javelins. When I had 8, I considered that to be enough. So it was time for part 2 of my plan. Wait for them to approach, wind up their attacks and lower their shields. When they do, my javelins would pierce their flesh. That worked pretty well against the first two raiders, but overconfidence is an insidious killer. You see, I was expecting the third one to meet the same fate, so I waited for him to wind up his strike and lower his shield and when he did, I reacted too impatiently and my shot got deflected just as his strike began. When I realized the extent of my mistake, I tried sprinting out of there, but it was already too late and just like that, I got downed in a single swing. My lack of patience resulted in a stupid mistake which I vowed to never repeat. Now, me and the surviving looter were captured by these raiders and they dragged us along as prisoners for a few days until I was made an offer I couldn't refuse. Pay up and you'll go free. I actually refused that offer and made my escape not long after and as soon as I did, I went after the raiders without waiting for my health to replenish. I was pissed and just wanted revenge. As you can expect, my plan was the same. Dodge their missiles, pick them up and send them back. Once I had three of them, it was time for killing. So I readied myself, took some distance, and when the first of these raiders closed in, he lowered his shield to wind up his attack. His own javelin wound up lodged inside of his skull. The second raider was going to be a bit more difficult to fight because his spear offers him enough reach to hit me before I may be able to throw my missile. But I made it work and his skull was also enriched with a javelin. However, he was still alive after that. Somehow. But another one put him down forever. I do not know the name of this brave warrior, but if he were still alive, I'd have named him Thorold Thickskull. When the battle was over, I also rescued my initial looter companion. You know, the one I beat with his own rocks a little over a week ago. I leave no man behind, I told him. That was a total lie, but I needed to build up his loyalty towards me and he was thankful for the rescue. Who knows what awaits a looter who breaks the outlaw truce and attacks a fellow bandit. He doesn't have to know either. But recovering my soldier was just the bonus. The true prize was my very first weapon. A bag of fishing harpoons. They're not the best javelins around, but at least I no longer have to depend on the projectiles thrown by my enemies. With these, I could easily defeat small groups of looters, take their stuff, make a bit of money and eventually recruit those who survive. I would love to talk about the future, but as the saying goes, less talking, more raiding. So instead of discussing those plans right now, we'll put them into practice in the next chapter of Bandit's Ballads. For now, let us savor this victory, remember the struggles we've overcome and appreciate just how far we made it. On the seventh day of autumn of 1084, I was thrown into the dungeons of Mesea. One week later, I made my escape. One month after that, I was thrown into another dungeon. Throughout my painful journey, I was imprisoned about 18 times until I had my first taste of victory, and another couple of times before I reached my final goal of obtaining a weapon. As for this feat, it was achieved in the 11th day of summer of 1085, right on my birthday. 
after almost a year of being dragged along as a prisoner, forced into thraldom and being fed nothing but leftovers. But the drowned god gave me the strength I needed to vanquish my foes, and with this strength, I also obtained the tools to get the job done more efficiently. Not only that, but I also have a loyal looter companion who shall be my tour guide across the continent of Calradia, provided he survives long enough. I'll certainly try to keep him away from the fighting, at least for a while. But that was all for the day's chapter. In retrospect, it was a bit monotonous and repetitive and quite exhausting, I imagine. But so was my journey up to this point, and I'm sure my story conveyed that well. I hope you've enjoyed the first chapter and I will see you in the next one. Farewell.